Hello, welcome to Dungeon Dwellers Podcast. Today is our first review for Halloween month, where all month I'm reviewing uh, comics that I feel like would be a good read for this month. Today we're starting with Fear, Fear Itself, Deadpool, uh, Fearsome 4, which collects uh, issues 1 through 3 of Fear Itself, Deadpool, and Fear Itself, Fearsome 4. One through four. If you didn't um, watch my Daredevil review, Fear itself, I thought sucked. I'm not going to review it. If people f- want me to review it, I will. But unless I get a comment saying for me to review it, I'm not going to. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. I, I don't. Matt Fraction to me is a shitty writer, but I don't know. Whatever. So. For we'll review Fear Itself, Deadpool first. Uh, it's written by Christopher Hastings, art by Bong Dazzo, who did the artwork for Daniel Way's uh, Deadpool series. Which Daniel Way is one of those writers, he sucks, but Bong uh, Dazzo, I thought his art's good. It's very, he's very good at drawing like physical comedy, I would say. Um, his like uh, art style is really good for like you know uh, funny story <laughs> uh, books that are trying to be uh, comedic so it starts off with Deadpool he's trying to uh, do uh, he's pulling a scam uh, where he's selling like home renovations to a couple that are will protect them from super villain attacks. They're called superpower terrorists in here. I I swear to God, I've never heard that term other than from Ultimates. But now it's like I'm reading it everywhere. It's like what the fuck. But yeah, it's like he makes a joke saying like, oh, like we reinforce your walls so not even the Juggernaut can break in. What do you think happens next? Juggernaut, sma- Juggernaut, who's empowered by uh, one of the magic hammers. Because in Fear itself, what happens is some um, villain named the Serpent. I think it's. I think they're talking about the Serpent from North mythology, not Seth, the Serpent God, which was also a four film. Um, sent down like hammer hammers like Mjolnir to Earth, and basically super powered already super powerful villains like Juggernaut, Absorbing Man, Grey Gargoyle. Uh, who else did they mention? Uh, I think they said Atuma, Titania, uh, and also the Fang. The Hulk too? Holy shit. Yeah, also the thing. And so, Juggernaut smashes through <laughs> through the wall. Um, he's not getting paid <laughs> now. And, like, he tries to, like, he, he has, like, two workers with him. Two contractors. He tries to get them to, uh, you know, try to salvage the devices. They're like, no, we can't. We have to go to Samara in New Mexico. I don't know how to pronounce it. I'm not American, sorry. Um, they have to go to New Mexico. Uh, what happens is that a werewolf bl- blows up their van, and Deadpool sees uh, a hammer lying around and gets an idea. He takes the hammer, uh, bedazzle it, and decides he want he's going to trick a villain that he can he thinks he can easily defeat the defeat into thinking he has one of those magical hammers have the guy destroy a town so he can show up convince the people to hi- the hire him so he can defeat the villain and um, yeah so like th- this is a very like scummy um, almost like super villain Deadpool which Deadpool was originally a super villain. I really like that part <laughs> that he's gone back to scummy ways. That makes it that that could lead to you know 
funny situations. Like, it's... Because, like, he... Deadpool was never supposed to be, like, a superhero, but people treat him as one because of those fucking movies. Which, I like the first one. The second one looks like trash to me. Like, and, and then there's the fact that People like the Deadpool movies, even people who read the comics, but nobody mentions, like, these movies are obviously inspired by the Deadpool, like, uh, the Daniel Way Deadpool books. Like, even one of the actors, Ed Skrine, said, like, he read uh, Daniel Way's Deadpool to get ready for the role. And then I, I would see, like, references, in the first movie, I would see references to Daniel Way's Deadpool. But I, the first Deadpool movie was good. The second one, I looked look, look like garbage to me. Uh, but we're not reviewing that. So he picks Walrus Man, which I didn't even bother to check to see if he was a real villain or not. Uh, he's really dumb, but he has some he has some super strength and vulnerability. You know that that you know scales to his uh, strength, right? So he's been going around. A wal walrus man has been going around uh, working as a maintenance uh, a worker for monster truck rallies, sabotaging them to um, sabotaging them to get the uh, drive monster truck drivers killed so he can rob <laughs> rob them, <laughs> and it's like wow you. That's even Deadpool points out how retarded that is. Um, so after he can, he, oh by the way, Deadpool puts on this very, um, this very um, wit like witch, like very I don't want to say goofy, but like witch costume. He also has a mask that's kind of reminiscent of Ghostface from Scream. But yeah, he tricks um, Walrus Man, and then yeah, he tricks Wal Wal uh, Walrus Man. They go to New Mexico. They and it turns out there's a plot twist. Um, the two um, contractors that was working with Deadpool on that um, home improvement job. I should have said that in the beginning. That home improvement job turned out to be werewolf hunters. And they need the hammer because the hammer, um, the hammer can negate the healing factors of werewolves, so the werewolf hunter, uh, werewolf hunters can kill them. So you have werewolves who show up, uh, which again I had a feeling looking at the cover that this would make for a good Halloween review, and I was right. <laughs> and so like you have the twist, the twists where like. Deadpool gets his ass kicked, but eventually, because it's a Deadpool book, you have, you have to have your hero lose, and only to come back again. Everything's resolved. And there's like, uh, I, there's some funny scenes in here I don't want to spoil, but there, there's a Deadpool uh, fangirl in this that I thought some of the jokes they made with that character was a little creepy, but like, it, it's not, you know perverted but it's just like it could be someone interpreted as that because they, they <laughs> uh but yeah like i don't want to spoil the end but it's it, i would say it's pretty good it's it's definitely a i would say a seven out of ten so next the fearsome four fearsome four i've i wanted to like fearsome four but it's a little too wordy there there's too much like you know, like you get an origin story from almost all the, f you get an origin story um, for like almost like half the cast. They, except even actually even Howard the Duck. It turns out like H Howard the Duck, who people don't know, he's like this character from a universe where. Everybody is a uh, anthropomorphic. Uh, I don't know if I said that right. Uh, duck who got who gets teleported to our world. Apparently, it was the Man Thing that done it all along. He and uh, Man Thing, because of what's going on in the world, 
is going is going crazy with all the fear that's going on. Man Fang, who is a ripoff of Swamp Fang. Obviously, you can tell by the name and his powers, which he can burn everything. Uh, he can burn anything he touches, except for when it's convenient for the heroes when he punches them and they don't get burned. But yeah, like they. Uh, Howard the Duck enlists his, um, Jennifer Walters, She-Hulk, and they run into Nighthawk and Frankenstein, who, and they all team up to become the fearsome four to take down Man-Thing, but what, but, uh, it turns out Man-Thing is also being tracked down by this villain called Psycho-Man, who collected um heroes from other multiverses sorry yeah universes and, and brainwash them to be their slaves so they fight the so our fearsome four fights the fantastic four but the fantastic four from the their universe is made up of ghost rider the hulk who looks like gray hulk but they don't re they don't call him gray hulk but he whatever and wolverine and spider-man while the um, while all this is going on, like they like the the series um, keeps switching artists because and the explanation the excuse they give why they do that is because Man Fang can control the nexus of universes or some sh some bullshit like that. Again, it's. I want to like this, but it, it was a little too wor wordy, like, a lot, too much explanations, too much, like, uh, useless build-up, like, they, like, to me, it didn't need to be, for the story they wanted to tell, it didn't need to be four issues, but, I don't know, I thought it was decent, but because... Uh, because it's not as good as the Deadpool story, I would have to uh, say that at best this is like a like a six, maybe a five and a half, depending. I would say it's a six if you like Deadpool, but if you don't like Deadpool, this is like a five and a half at best. It's a bit cheap. It's it was nice to see Nighthawk, but then there, there's a scene where Nighthawk fights like. Wolverine and he's kicking Wolverine's ass and it, it takes like Spider-Man and Ghost Rider to, to with Wolverine to take down Nighthawk and like Nighthawk last time I checked doesn't have any fucking superpowers so that's a little retarded for me but yeah I don't know it's just it could have been better the artwork was okay there's one point where they they switch the, they switch artists and like uh, She-Hulk is drawn to look like Megan Fox for some reason I don't know and, and like I would say also there's like a moral story it, like it tells like a moral like you know uh, <laughs> yeah it tells it tells a moral story where it's like you have when your friends are uh, going down uh, going through a spiral you gotta do your best to help them and you gotta look at yourself and okay, I don't know it's uh, some retarded bullshit like kids aren't reading this like why are you t t telling us moral stories kids aren't reading this shit nowadays <laughs> uh whatever I gotta end the review we're kind of getting to that um yeah if we if this review goes any longer I might not be able to upload it on YouTube so all right peace see you on the next review